Meet the new benchmark of minivans, the new 2017 Chrysler Pacifica with warranty forever. Mobile at TwinCitySuperstore.com. The opportunity to visit with you. It's been, uh, I think this is my fourth day in the office, so I'm a grizzled veteran of, uh, of the wars here. And uh, I would just say this in terms of an initial, uh, initial impression and, and four days in, it's been, uh, it's been a tremendous uh, start to my time here at Purdue, and uh, everyone has been incredibly welcoming in every way possible. Uh, football Saturday was maybe the busiest football Saturday I've ever had in my life. I mean, Nancy Cross had me by the back of the neck and uh, marching from place to place to place to place, but it was terrific. I got a chance to meet so many terrific Purdue people, and the dinner on Friday night, the old, old black event was uh, likewise spectacular. You know, lots of tremendously supportive people there, and uh, everybody incredibly welcoming. Uh, just it's just been all that's been just terrific, and then uh, you know on a day-to-day -day basis, our staff, uh, Tom and all his colleagues have, have been have been great in helping me get oriented here in a, in, a, in a very very good way, and that will be ongoing for a while. Obviously, you don't get it figured out in uh, three and a half days in the office, but uh, but it's been a great start to all that, and, and Morgan uh, Burke has been beyond uh, helpful. I mean, he's uh, he's he's worked really really diligently on the front end to put together a, a really comprehensive transition plan and outline. And we've been begun working through that uh, in a very careful way and, and conscientious way, and it's been, been just great. I, uh, you know, I've, I've done this transition before, and it's uh, it's never been like this. And, uh, and, and I mean that in the very best way. Uh, this has been so, so well thought out and so, uh, so carefully planned, uh, which is, which is indicative of Morgan and who he is and how, how what a professional he is. But it's it's really played well and will be to my great benefit. It'll really fast forward my 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 orientation and my familiarity with Purdue. I won't I don't have to figure it out on my own how how to get through this. He's he's laid it out in a way that just makes great sense and uh, really gives me a chance to get my arms around the entire place and program very very quickly. So uh, really appreciate that. Really really helpful. Uh, again, I. Some of it just takes time. I mean, there's no way to, to, to speed up through all of it. I, I, can't, I can't build the relationships. I can't know the people uh, any quicker than I can get to meet them. But uh, the sooner we can do all that, uh, this, it, it'll happen in time, and I look forward to it. But, but the early, early returns have been, from my perspective, incredibly positive. I've, uh, anything I might have thought about Purdue on my, on my way here has been, has been nothing but, but Trumped in a positive way, I and mean, it's just it's just a great a great university, a great community, a great situation from an athletic perspective. And I look forward to the, the days and years ahead. And I just uh, I wish I could I wish I could jump in, you know jump forward in time here and kind of get through all that familiarization time. But again, that just you just got to work through that. I and mean, it's just there's, there's really no good way to do that. Uh, you know, just in terms of what's happening right now, just so you know. Um, again, we're working through that transition plan, but at the same time. I've scheduled uh, a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with our, with our, with all of our senior leadership staff, uh, with all of our head coaches. Uh, those I've already um, five or six deep into that process, and there are several more uh, scheduled today and and throughout the rest of the week. And then we run into just all the other things that happen this time of year: Big Ten meetings next week, and Division One A meetings the following week, and Big Ten meetings again the next week. So it won't happen in a straight line. There'll be a little bit of uh, fits and starts, but. Uh, but the familiarization is is, is, is growing, going great, and uh, again, just really really excited about uh, about the early start to uh, to being here at Purdue, and uh, really looking forward to the future. Any questions? Just fire away, Mike uh, Jeff Washburn, uh, Associated Press, yes, and the Fort Wayne Journal Gazette. Yep. Um, couple twofold questions. First of sure. all, was Saturday your first game here, or might you have been here in '77 when Joe Montana? First under the scene in Ross A. Stadium. I uh, I might have been here then. Plus, I might have been here in 1980 something, five or six, somewhere around there. Um, I was also in the Hoosier Dome when you guys beat us 24-23. So, I, but but I've been here at least twice for, for football games previously. Been here for basketball games. So, so this was not my first West Lafayette Purdue experience. I I, I have been here before. So as the follow up to yes. that, that's I. Didn't want to ask you a blind yeah. question, sure. but you have been here. Yeah. Okay. I think Jim Everett was the quarterback. When, when yes. Mark Herman was the quarterback when Montana was there. There you go. Right. So, um, you know, you talked on August 9th about 
I think, uh, to paraphrase, I think you said you want to enhance the Purdue football experience. Right. Sure. And that, you know, you want to start with the students before they even get here. You yeah. talked about what you did at Georgia Tech. Right. Um, you know, you witnessed Saturday mm -hmm. uh, you know, a Purdue football Saturday. Right, right. Um, my question is, um, you know, that was Saturday, mm -hmm. the smallest opening day crowd right. since I was five days old, and I'll be 62 on right. September 20th. So how do you, as you were watching things, as you, your mind was clicking with what you did with Georgia Tech, mm -hmm. how do you, any thoughts as to how you bring them back? Now, you got, if you win, sure. it's, you know, it's like sure. if you build it, they will come. But what's your thoughts on, on how do you get that back? Sure. Well, Jeff, I think you, know, you alluded to the fact that some of it is a result of having several years now of, of less than optimal results. That's, that's a fact, and, and there's, a, there's a carryover effect from that that we can't deny. It's a, just reality. I'm, like, I'm not going to sugarcoat that any, any way. It's, it, it is what it is. That being said, what I did see on Saturday uh, was, was all, everything was really, really good. I mean, it was, it was great. I mean, even for, uh, you know, for, a, for a holiday weekend and all, uh, given the circumstances, I didn't think it was awful, and I thought the things that we did from a game presentation perspective were all really solid. We just need more critical mass. We just need more folks uh, and, and to, to be part of that. I mean, that's that's the thing. All the elements are in place. I mean, the the you know, it, it, but the the great thing will be when the parking lots are full again before the game, and you've got all that energy, and the student section is even bigger than it was on Saturday. All all those things start to happen as you as you as I looked at it on Saturday, I was envisioning. And we remember it back to when I was last here, when the crowds were, were what they were, and it was not a fun place to play at all from an opponent's perspective. Um, I mean, that's that's obviously the goal, and that's the objective, and that's what we need to continue to work to. Uh, you know, part of it is success. Just that's a fact, and you can't you just can't deny that. Uh, that that's going to be part of it. Along the way, if there are other things that we'll be able to do to, to continue to enhance uh, the experience in the meantime on the road to, to that success. We'll certainly look at that. Saturday was a day where, again, I was moving so fast. I was in so many different places. I, 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 I was just taking you know, personal or, or sort of uh, visual snapshots as the best I could, but I really didn't have a chance to sit and, and really analyze and look. I, I, was, I was moving very quickly. But uh, hopefully this Saturday will be, I'll still be moving, but maybe not quite as quickly and, and get a, a greater grasp on sort of the, the game day. But, uh, but all the pieces are there. I mean, they really are, and uh, it, it's just... We just need more people at the party. That's 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 the story right now. Uh, Mike George Lindsay from the Purdue Exponent. You talked about the transition plan. Yes. Uh, could you talk about just some of the more important points on that? Yeah. It's a, <laughs> uh, so the the transition plan in, in total is enclosed and is contained in a notebook that Morgan gave me uh, when I had dinner uh, with he and Kate at their home uh, last week, and uh, as we were finishing up dinner. Uh, Kate said, you're not going to bring that notebook out, are you? And uh, Morgan said, oh, yes, I am. So we, it was sitting over on a table. And it's, it's this big. I, mean, I didn't think they made them. That, I didn't think they made three ring binders that big. I think he might have had it custom made. Uh, but it's, it is full of uh, all sorts of, of tremendous information. Every contract that we've got, every external uh, agreement, uh, all sorts of, 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 of historical, financial, program, program evaluations, you name it. It's, it's all in there. Uh, the transition outline itself, I think, is six, six single space pages of, uh, of sort of, again, in, in a really logical format and in flow. Uh, you know, and as Morgan pointed out, he goes, you know, we're going we're gonna to talk about it in this exact order because it's, you know, there's, a, there's a method to the madness of how, the, how it was laid out. But it's, again, really, really well done. And, you know, it, we started with uh, just an overview, a departmental overview, which included several of the, of the senior staff members. Uh, but then yesterday we dove into more uh, sport by sport, most recent program evaluations. So every every sport administrator talked about their individual programs and what what they saw uh, beyond what was written on the evaluations that I could read. Uh, but they just filled in a little bit of the blanks and gave me a little bit more, uh, a little more depth on, on, from an evaluation standpoint. And it was it's just great. I mean, it's just for me. Uh, one of the things I'm I, I don't mind. I can I can take in a lot of information and process it. So this, for me, is perfect. I mean, I, I like taking it all in. The more I see, the more I know, and I'm exposed to on the front end, the better and more quickly I'll get assimilated and, and be able to sort of understand how I might chart a course going forward. 
uh, to the extent that it's going to be different. I mean, it may not be drastically different, and, and I don't expect it to be drastically different uh, in, in, in any way, but certainly there'll be some, some adjustments as we move forward. But this, this, this document and set of documents is a great starting point. Mike, you'd mentioned back on August 9th you thought there was a really strong foundation in place yeah. to take off from at Purdue. Now you've been on the job for a couple of days. What is that foundation? What's the starting point here for well, you? Well, I mean, there, there are lots of things that, uh, and, and, and I would tell you, Brian, that my, my opinion on that front has not changed at all. In fact, if anything, it's, it's even stronger as I've gotten a little bit ex exposure to what truly is, is here. Um, you know, from a, purely from a facility perspective, which is sort of a baseline uh, need, uh, you know, we're, we're in general in really, really good shape there. So many great things have happened in, in the recent past here that we, you know, we don't have lots of just burning, got to fix right now uh, facility issues, which is a great place to be in. So, you know, what that allows me to, to do and our, and our staff to do is to, is to move from that, and there are always facilities, there's, there, that never stops. I mean, it's, always, it's sort of an ongoing chase the rabbit thing, but, uh, but, but beyond that, we don't have the, the big, big, big things other than you know, the next phase of, of Ross Aid, and we'll, we're working on that. In fact, Morgan is, uh, has taken that on here uh, with, a, with a hope for, he set his own sort of target date of end of, end of year, uh, end of calendar year this year to uh, sort of bring that last phase of the, of the Ross Aid plan to, a, to some reasonable conclusion, which is a great thing. Beyond that, other foundational elements are uh, just a staff that knows the place really, really well, that has a sense of, 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 of where we are and how we might move forward. Coaches that I believe are, are, are great fits for Purdue and, and capable of and, and understanding of how we go from where we are today to where we'd like to go. All those things are here are from a financial perspective where there's never enough, obviously, there's never, but, but we're stable, we're sound, we're, uh, the, the program is in very, very good shape financially. Uh, with better days coming for sure as we get additional resources uh, through media agreements that the Big Ten is, uh, is is in the process of finalizing that will take place here, uh, will begin in 17, 18. So, you know, when you've got facilities, finances, people sort of in, in a pretty good place, I mean, those, those are the foundational elements. And from there, Brian, what you do is you work on, on mindset and approach and, and sort of aspirations and expectations and you reinforce sort of a, a program development philosophy that I think is where we are, which is which is really a great position from my perspective. Mike, um, Pete the Premier Full Way New Center. Yeah, um, from your perspective, what what kind of goals do you set for each sport? Like you want each sport to win the Big Ten Championship or whatever what, what's a realistic goal that you're going to set for the program in terms of each sport? Well I, I think once I get through this 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 early on evaluation process, Pete, and, and get a sense of that, uh, we'll, we'll dive in a little more specifically to exactly what that is, but you know, we've got an overriding goal right now for all of our sports to be top 25 in the country. That, that's been in place. That's not changing. Uh, and, and along the way, certainly Big Ten championships are something that I don't know that we would have less than that as our goal in any, in any sport. I don't know why we would say it's our goal to not win a Big Ten championship. We, we certainly wouldn't say that. And uh, you want to make sure that those are reality-based goals for sure. But once I get through the evaluation, I'll be able to say that with a lot more certainty. But my initial read on it is that that's a perfectly appropriate goal and something that we should aspire to and work towards and be thinking about as we go about our business every day. doesn't mean it happens overnight. Everybody's just, you know, every team in the Big Ten probably is aspiring to win a Big Ten championship. We're not, we're not alone in, in that goal. But what can we be doing on a day-by-day -day basis at Purdue to put us in a position to do so? That's, that will be our challenge, my challenge, our staff's challenge, our coach's challenge to, to make sure that we're taking the steps that we believe are necessary for us here at Purdue to, to achieve that goal. But that's, Big Ten Championships are, are absolutely on, 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 the, on the agenda for us. Mike Nathan Baird from the Kidder. Um, in the past, Purdue, in terms of non-revenue sports, has always employed coaches with a, what, what Morgan called the evergreen contracts or one-year contracts mm -hmm. with some sort of agreement that yep. had to be renewed by a certain date. Um, they started to get away from that a little bit in, within the last few months mm -hmm. with baseball and track. Just what's kind of been your philosophy Towards the non-revenue sports in that regard, sure. And how do you see that going forward here? We, uh, and I've had multi-year contracts in, in non-revenue sports, uh, perhaps not on a blanket across the board basis, but certainly in selected cases where it, where it makes where it makes sense and where where you've got somebody that you feel really strongly about, and, and you, you you need to make that show of commitment, and uh, and, and they and they're looking for that uh, 
to allow them to be feel, feel equally committed from, from their side. So I'm not opposed to it at all. I think it, I think it makes sense in today's world. Uh, again, with, with the right person and the right circumstance, I think those are things that we'll continue to do. And I, and I, I Morgan's explained, has explained to me the, the decisions that he's made or the, the initiatives that he's taken in that area, and I, I'm comfortable with all of them. I don't think there's, a, there's any of them that would be uh, things that you would look at and say, well, why, why that? They make perfect sense to me. What about with revenue sport assistant coaches? You know, I've done that selectively. Mm -hmm. uh, not, again, not have not done that across the board. Uh, that, that's something that, again, we'll, we'll talk about as the environment shifts around us. I mean, you can't, can't be blind to the world around you. And mm -hmm. again, if you've got folks that you feel really strongly about and, uh, and you need to make that level of commitment to attract them to, to be with us here at Purdue, then that's, that's part of what we'll have to think about going forward. I, I wouldn't roll that out either. I, again, I'm not going to sit here and say but on a blanket basis we're going we're to do that because that, that doesn't make sense to me. But, but selectively, we'll certainly think about that. Uh, Mike, Mike DeFeber with CNHI Sports Indiana. Um, I understand you were given the game ball after the football yeah. game. Uh, what would you do with that football? It's on my, it's on my shelf in the office. So uh, on one of my display shelves, I'm, I'm proud to have it. And uh, that's a great, it's a great memory, a great start. And uh, look forward to having many, many more as time goes by. Not, not that I need to be getting the game ball, but I'd, I'd be celebrating a lot more wins as we go down the road. Speaking of football, um, when Morgan Burke spoke about two weeks ago here, yeah. we asked him about football and how he would evaluate success on the football field this year. He said it would be inappropriate for him to comment on that. So can you just comment on how you would measure success this season? Well, th there's lots of facets to that. It's, there's, there's no one single metric other than obviously there's an obvious one that everybody can check uh, every day, and that's the, that's the one loss record. I mean, that's, that's going to be one for everybody uh, to, to have an opinion about. Uh, and that's certainly part of it. I mean, win winning at the end of the day, this, this is a... Uh, performance-based industry, and there's a reason we keep scoring. And so winning and losing will, will certainly have, have something to do with it. But beyond that, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's my, my job during these next several months uh, to really start to understand where our football program is, how it's situated, what the opportunity for growth and success is as, as, the years, as we look out in the years ahead. Uh, and that takes lots of different forms. You know, what, what, what does our roster look like? What's the development, the, the realistic development? Uh, prospects that, that you can see and, and project, uh, what, what's our recruiting pipeline look like, oh, there are lots of things um, that, that will go into that. I, I think the good news is that we're really, from a from an accountability, from an academic performance, from a good citizen performing, that, Coach Hazel's done a tremendous job. I mean, those things are all in, in great, great, great shape, so there's not, not lots of that that I'm going to have to spend a lot of time worrying about. It's really about looking, trying, trying to project ahead the competitive future uh, for the program. And again, that may not be necessary. If we have a great year, then that, that, that question will answer itself in some ways. Uh, but, but again, that all for one weekend, there's lot, lots of time and lots of evaluation that's going to take place as this, at least as the season unfolds. Mike, does it help you in a way that I mean, since you were at Notre Dame, Purdue, buddy, before that, Purdue basketball has yep. been you know, kind of the beacon. Mm -hmm. It's been the constant. Matt had a couple of bad years, but, you know, they should be outstanding. Mm -hmm. As you're easing into the situation, you know, I, mean, I know the answer to this is yes, but I'd like to embellish yes. it a little bit. Uh, you know, the fact that basketball is on such solid footing mm -hmm. currently, right. you know, and uh, th does that help you, you know, being able, not that you won't focus on basketball, but you can focus on football a little bit more because it's not like you're coming in and both programs are struggling. Yeah, and I think the unique situation, or not, not the unique, but the situation with Matt is, you know, Matt's, Matt's a veteran guy. He's, this is 12 years here at Purdue. Uh, he, he knows what he's doing. He understands the place. There, there, there's, there's very little there that's, that's sort of up for question at this point. Uh, you know, it, it's really in, in his mind about how do we take that next step? How do we, how do we push this thing to, to really the highest possible level. He and I had a chance to visit yesterday uh, for the first time we had a, we had our one-on-one -on -one yesterday. It was great. I mean, it was, it was everything I expected it to be. And uh, you know, Matt's got a great grasp of, of Purdue and basketball here at Purdue and, and what his program needs to and wants to look like going forward. And I appreciate uh, a guy that's been a 12-year head coach at a place. You know, the, the work that he puts in to try to constantly get better and to improve what he does and how he's doing it. How, how his staff is approaching things day in, day out. I mean, that's that, that's the sign of a program that's that's really well positioned and, and is going to really do good things in, in years ahead. So the answer is yes. I, I don't have to spend lots of worrisome time uh, with basketball, but I'm not going to ignore basketball. I mean, it's important 
that I that my relationship with Matt grows. You know, we well, interestingly, I know nearly every coach in the Big Ten, uh, but it really hadn't been around Matt a bunch uh, from a basketball perspective in, in, the, in the previous years. We've got lots of, of tremendously close mutual friends and acquaintances, uh, but but I, even yesterday I could just you know, we're going to be just fine. We're we're going to we're going to speak the same language and, and, and be in a good place. But I want to make sure that I spend time to develop that relationship. He needs to know that he can come and see me. I can't. I can't say I got no time for you. I'm, I'm working on football exclusively. But certainly football is, is is going to take up lots of time. It's it's they're in season. This is the time. Uh, obviously, it's there's lots of focus and attention on it, and it'll get every bit of my time that it needs to. When you define success in basketball, how do you weigh postseason versus regular season? Well, um, they both matter. I mean, they certainly both matter. Uh, but, you know, the way the men's basketball environment in this, in this country has evolved, uh, you know, people define you by your postseason success in lots of ways. Now, that doesn't that's necessarily fair, and I don't know that that's necessarily a complete evaluation, but having postseason success is something that we're going to want to do, and certainly Matt wants to do it, and, right. uh, and, and we'll do everything we possibly can to, to, to be at our best when it matters the most or when, it's, when, when, the, when the lights are the brightest. I mean, that's, uh, that's clearly something that uh, we talked about yesterday, and, you know, we, we, we certainly share the same objectives there and, and think that we'll be in positions in years, like years to come to, to do that. And so, uh, you know, as he looks at his roster and the pieces that we need to be able to be successful in the postseason, I think he's got a very clear sense of that. And I'm like, looking forward to working with him as he, as he continues to put that together. But, uh, but it's, you know, it's not, it's not either or, Brian, it's both yeah. uh, in, in my eyes. Uh, I, I don't want to win winning a Big Ten championship. Being in the Big Ten championship game as we were here last year, that is not easy. Those are not easy things to do. And those are really, really big time accomplishments. And uh, you know, if you're really being honest about your program, uh, doing those things, getting great seeds in the NCAA tournament, are really, really great indicators of what, where your program is. You know, but the tournament is is again, it's the focal point from a from a public and media perspective. Everybody focuses on it for sure. But the, the, the tournament is also sometimes, is, is it always the best, the best team that's standing at the end or, or the best teams? Sometimes yes, sometimes maybe not yes. So, uh, but, but having a great regular season throughout is still, still really, really important. That's not, not something to take lightly at all. What, uh, what is your philosophy on non-conference scheduling? Now, football, you used to have three games that you have to work with. Mm -hmm. But when you look at some of the other sports, you know, basketball yep. in particular, what kind of what? Where do you come from in that regard, especially <coughs> as a former chair of yeah. the NCAA selection sure. committee? Um, and, and I think uh, I felt that way before I got on the committee, and I still feel that way. I think a non-conference schedule, particularly in the basketball, is, it's, it's balance. Like you, you don't want, you don't want to kill yourself and, and kill your team, and you know, and, and destroy confidence in the non-conference season. But you certainly want to have those opportunities to really test yourself. Also, you want to have enough balance in your schedule that sort of gives you that opportunity to, to get playing time and to get people on the court against teams that maybe aren't going to be really, really highly challenging games, although you never know how it's going to play out. But, but then have also, also those moments where you're going to have teams that you're going to be really tested so that when the Big Ten comes, it's not the first time you've seen live bullets. And so I think it's really important from a team development perspective, but it's certainly important from an NCAA selection and, and seeding perspective. Having been in that room for five years, I know when – one of the biggest evaluation points when you look at teams, um, if, first of all, if they're in question from selection perspective, it's okay, what do they do with the non-conference schedule? What is, who do they choose to play? And if it's a complete wash where you chose to play nobody of any consequence, that, that's tough. I mean, that, that, that presents another degree of difficulty. If you have played great teams in, in the non-conference, or at least a, a selection of great teams, you don't have to win them all. You just have to have made the effort to go play them. And I think that's, that's, that's the thing that gets lost sometimes with coaches is that they say, well, you know, I can go play these five teams, but we only may win two or three of them. That's okay. That's okay. And uh, that, that, that really is, again, in that, in that room, having done that for five years, I know how that's viewed. It's viewed in a very positive light. Uh, the, the, the concept and act of playing good people is something that I believe in, and, uh, and, the, and the committee certainly rewards that. And I'm looking at our schedule issue, we've got that. You know, we've got every bit of that. We're, we're, I like where we're scheduled. I like how we're scheduled, and uh, I think I think Matt's got a really solid approach to it. So we're 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 very very much in sync on that. On that that apply to all the sports stuff. I, I think I think every yeah, and every program's in a different place too. Like as as, as you're working through sort of a, a growth and development 
phase with, with a particular program that maybe is, is coming off of a less than successful run, you, you're going to schedule appropriately. You're going to you're going to find ways to, to, to build confidence and maybe build some more success. But as you get to a point where you feel like, hey, we're we're getting there, now now you want to have those opportunities to play against the best because again, I think that's what that's what great athletes want. You know, they want to trust themselves against the very best. Not that you're not going to see that day in and day out in the Big Ten, but even out of conference, you're going to want to find opportunities to play against the best in the country because that's that's the young people that we want here at Purdue, kids, folks that are motivated by those kind of challenges. Mike, along those lines, but referring to football, I was eager to ask you this question. Being a Notre Dame grad, you know, Purdue and Notre Dame. Trying to overcome that today. That's all right. Uh, you were, every year from 1948 until, you know, a couple of years ago, Purdue and Notre yeah. Dame played. Now with conferences and everything and schedule, it's hard. But as a Notre Dame guy, now a Purdue guy, would you like to, can, you know, somehow play Notre Dame in football as often as possible? Absolutely. I mean, it just it just makes sense. I, I'd like to play them in everything we can. I mean, geographically, it's, it's it's a no brainer from that perspective. Um, you know, from a historical perspective, particularly football, as you said, I mean, this this thing's got lots of tradition and history behind it. Um, I, I remember those games from the other side of, of the aisle, and uh, I mean, they were never ones that Notre Dame looked at with, with with anything other than oh my God, we, you know this this is not going to be easy. And, uh, and and I think that's you know, I, I would like to continue that. And Morgan. That, that's, that is on our transition agenda to talk about because he's had some conversations, I know, in, in the recent past with Jack uh, Swarbrick up at Notre Dame, and uh, he wants to turn that over to me as, as, as we look forward. I think there's some, some things in place through a period of time, but then the out years are still to be, de to be determined. But hell, I, I, I get it on there as often as we possibly can. I think it makes great sense. It's doable, though. Yes, right. yes, yes. Yeah. <coughs> Challenge it, you your, with your experience level, it, uh, you had to be challenged by this opportunity when you were looking at it. How is that uh, the proverbial head on the pillow before August 9th? Yeah. And what you said, boy, this is the challenge and I'm ready to meet. And has that, have you seen something in the last month that says that may refine that challenge or change that challenge in terms of the proverbial head on the pillow as you go to, go to sleep each night? Sure. Um, I would tell you, Alan, I'm sleeping better. Actually, uh, the last couple of days than I did in the last month because you, you know there's uncertainty until you actually get someplace. You don't really know. You're you're imagining what it might be like and uh, how 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 folks might receive you or not receive. You know, all, all that is an unknown until you get here. And uh, as I as I mentioned earlier on, I, my, my first couple of days have been nothing but 100% affirming of, of of the decision to to, to, to join the Purdue family and uh, and everything I've seen tells me that we're in. Every bit as good a place as I thought we were, and, and maybe even better in, in some cases. You know, just just there, there are there are very few sort of obvious, if any, obvious. Oh my gosh, we got we got to fix that or change that. I mean, there's just it's it's about taking things from a from a good place to a to a, to a better place, and that's 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 a whole different thing than than having to rebuild from the ground up. And that's that is absolutely not in any way, shape, or form where we are at Purdue. Where, We've got a tremendously strong foundation built, and uh, it's, it's, it's a matter of just sort of elevating our, our collective level across the board, day in and day out, which, which was exactly the plan had Morgan not retired. He would, he would want to do the same thing. It's just that I come in with my own approach to that and my own, my own perspective, uh, you know, having, having not been here for, for, for a number of years. I mean, I get to see it from my own, with my own eyes and from my own, you know, with my own lens, and, uh, and that will certainly shape things as we go forward, but, but in general, it's, I, I've had none of those, I haven't laid awake at all, at, at, at any evening saying, oh my God, what have I done? And it's, that is not, that's not happening. But uh, from a personal standpoint, yeah. before you took the job, you, you, everybody has to envision, hey, this is going to be a challenge, this is what excites me about yeah. this job. Yeah. Yeah. Has, that, has that changed at all in terms of that one or two things that say, well, that's going to be a great challenge for me, I'm looking forward to that. Now that you're into it for a month, is, has that changed or, or dovetailed into something else? Um, I, I don't know. Honestly, I don't know that it's changed dramatically. I really don't. I, I, I saw, you know, from a distance, I saw this as a, as a really a job or an opportunity where we're focusing on program development, focusing on helping our people grow and, and develop that sort of championship mindset mentality day in and day out and, and really embracing that as, as what was really going to be the, the order here and uh, or, or the sort of the order of the day 
and I don't, I don't see it any differently. I think it's, I think it's pretty much that is what it is, and uh, and that's to me that's a great thing. And so it's, it's what I love doing. It's what I enjoy doing. Uh, so I, that's that's the challenge that I envisioned on the front end, and and that's what I see us working towards. And and I'm totally energized by that. I think it, I think it's great. I think fans might be curious. What was the directive from the board and Mitch about your job and what you need to do here? Uh, can never compromise the, the integrity or the academic success of our, of our program. That was that was job one and two, which uh, I, I get, and it's, uh, it's the same orders that I was operating under uh, at Georgia Tech, and uh, I get that, and, it's, and, and at Xavier, and I, mean, I don't know it any other way. So that was clearly the priority. We, we don't want to compromise on any of those things, but we want to have the highest degree of success that we're capable of having. So. Uh, Move on and get that done. Basically, you know, let's let's go win some games and, and, and whatever it is we're doing. And again, we're doing it and, and lots of things already. But they're they're looking for across the board board program improvement and enhancement. And that's that's you can't ask for anything more from a president and from a board than that type of direction. You know, when they're when they're invested philosophically in our success in every way. You know, with the caveat that we do it right, which again we, we all salute that this, that's what this department is, is about has been about. Uh, but when they when they truly care about our success, that's that gives you a fighting chance. Like it really, it really it's, it's a really really positive uh, situation. And, and and without it being, you know, again, we're, we're just one piece of, of the university. I, we all get that. We all understand that. But we're a very visible piece. And uh, I think that Mitch and uh, Mike Burgoff clearly understand that the value that athletics brings to Purdue, and, and, and that particularly athletic success and high level athletic success brings to Purdue is real. And it's from an image perspective, from a from just a reputational perspective, it doesn't doesn't make us a better school, but it makes us maybe just a more top of mind recognizable school. And that's those are those are really positive things that athletics can do and, and they, they're they're looking for that as we move forward to be even stronger. It might be a, a, how important is fundraising for not only your job but maybe for Daryl, the football coach and basketball coach. Yeah. Is that maybe more important now? Um, just how do you assess fundraising for you and, and the two key coaches? Yeah, it's it's part of all of our jobs, more so mine than it is theirs. Uh, you know, coaches coaches can help set the stage or provide you know those those, those key access points or, or relationships. Uh, very rarely will you ever have a coach that will ask for money. I, that's uh, they all usually run the other way when that, when that part of the conversation uh, comes up, which which is perfectly fine. That's not the, that's not what they do. Uh, but I'm, you know, I've done that for years and uh, did it as my primary responsibility for a couple of years at Xavier, so I, I'm very comfortable with that. But I would tell you that you know we had last year our, our team, our John Purdue Club team here, had a tremendous year fundraising wise. We raised up 37 million dollars uh, during the course of last year, which is really really strong. Uh, we need to continue that. I mean that's going to be important as we move forward to continue to finish the job with the stadium and to, and to make sure that we provide. The, the tools, the resources, and, and those things on the margin that maybe, from a budget perspective, you can't do everything year in and year out. But if you can raise the dollars to do it, you can provide all those sort of value-added opportunities for each of our teams to get done what they need to and, and, and really compete at a high level. So it's it's not going away. It's it's really really important. To what we need, and I'm thankful that our the Purdue community has been really supportive of us in the past. But we're gonna, we're going to need that to continue and, and to get nothing but stronger in the years ahead. How much attention do you pay to recruiting as the process unfolds, and where does that fit into your evaluation of coaches? Recruiting is sort of the uh, the beginning and end of success in a lot of cases mm -hmm. for uh, for coaches, Brian. It's uh, you know it's it's where you get it done. You, you know, it's not necessarily that you have to have uh, a recruiting report card that that gets national acclaim, but you have to have a recruiting report card that plays well for your program and provides you with the, the tools and the raw material you need to develop a successful. Uh, Successful team, whatever whatever your sport might be. So that's clearly part of every coaching evaluation. If you, you know, if you can't recruit, if you can't get the right young people you know, attracted into your program, you're going to have a hard time being successful. So it's it's part of it. I don't. It's not my job, uh, nor is it any of our sport administrators' job to recruit for coaches or to, to direct their recruiting. That's that's their job, and that's uh, that's something that we want. to But but my job and, and all of our folks' job is to be supportive of that in any way we can. And if they. You know, if they need our help, if they want us to be part of visits or, or in ways that we can be, you know, by rule uh, involved, we'll, we'll certainly do that, as will other people at, at Purdue. We've been, I know we'll call on academic folks, we'll call on the president on occasion, we'll do all those things and bring every resource to bear that we can. But it's 
mean, recruiting is is huge and important, obviously. It's, it's, that just goes without saying in my mind. Mike, along with recruiting and fundraising, uh, you know, the other night watching the Auburn game on TV, you know, Cam Newton's on the sideline, and, you know, high-profile guy. Yep. You've got Drew Brees, you know, has already done many things for the university. Sure. How important is it to you to involve those high-profile, high-end guys like a Robbie Hummel or, you know, you've got Brian Cardinal here now, yep. but guys that have had success at the next level and have had success here at Purdue not only academically but athletically. Do you believe that that's an important thing, and will you strive to bring back some of those people to help them in whatever capacity they could help you? Sure. I, I think it, it, it would be foolish to not take advantage of folks that, that are Purdue people that have had great success and that are clearly recognizable with not only our folks but others and can resonate with, with, with a variety of constituencies, whether it be prospective student athletes, their families, or, or others where people can say, wow, look at Drew Brees is a Purdue guy. Keena Turner is a Purdue guy. I mean, those those are you know, Leroy. I, mean, I had a chance to meet Leroy Keys, even though it, generationally he's more mine than uh, than uh, than others. Right. I mean, that for me was a huge deal on Friday night. I mean, I, 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 and what a guy. I mean, what, what an unbelievable ambassador for for Purdue in, in every way. So making taking advantage of, of those folks, and, and, and again in ways that you're you're permitted to, right. makes great sense. And uh, again, just shows. It, it gives our coaches a chance to point to what's possible. Well, you know, what can happen for folks that choose to come to Purdue? You can be the next version of, of all these people. David Badiah, you know, you name it. And just person after person, there's so many uh, so many folks that you can point to that have had great success uh, as a result of their Purdue experience or where we've been sort of the, the launching pad for their success. That's, that, that's a really, really good thing, and we should never we should never not look to take advantage of that. Lots so, on the... NCAA issues out there with student welfare, yes. student athlete welfare, yeah, yeah. Um, and you're not knee deep in it here to see what Purdue has and right. all that yet. Yeah. Just kind of some of your ideas of, as you look forward. How do you plan to enhance? How would you like to enhance things for the student athletes and sure. uh, kind of your ideas? We had, we had a chance yesterday to attend our Boilermaker, Boilermaker Athletic Council meeting, the first of the year, uh, at six a.m. Yes, 6 a.m. Uh, yesterday, yesterday morning. I, I didn't stutter on that. that was, it was, in fact, 6 a.m. Uh, so that was an eye-opener. But, uh, but my sense was, you know, first of all, what a great group of young people. I mean, just sharp as all get out. Uh, and, and, I, and when I had a chance to, 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 to speak with them, I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to look to you as, as folks that have been identified as, as, as leaders and, and people that have the capacity to express opinion. Uh, to do that for us and let us know because we, we can think we understand what your experience is like and what, that we're doing the right things and I think in many cases as, as I observe very quickly or very in a very short period of time I think we're doing lots of great things we're paying lots of attention to, to that component of, of, of what we do here but I'm going to look to them to say okay tell us the real story I mean are, are we meeting your needs are we are we doing a great job of transitioning you into Purdue on the front end are we developing you in the appropriate ways during your time, your four or five years with us, in, in a way, that, in a progressive way, uh, and then are you ready when, time, when, when the time ends, when, when it's time to leave Purdue, have we done a great job of, of, of getting you prepared and then helping you with that transition? If we, and if we do all those things really, really well, I think uh, I, I can, I'll feel very comfortable. I, th I think we're doing it pretty darn well already. And we've got resources attached to that, we've got people whose jobs it is to help those developmental opportunities take place, so I, I don't think we've got big gaps, uh, but but it is sort of the current issue du jour in the NCAA right now and nationally in college athletics. And we want to make sure that we're not only doing what's what's necessary, but that we're, you know, make, let, let's find ways to lead if we can in that. So I, I think as I get deeper into that and, and get a chance to meet with our team that works in that area, hopefully we'll, we'll find ways to be even better. But I think we're in a good place, Mike. I, I, I've got a scheduled meeting with uh, our president of the Board of Maker Athletic Council. Uh, she's got my calendar coming up to get her He's a senior, sharp as all get out, and, and again, we'll, we'll, I think, be very honest and, uh, and upfront with me about what the experience is like, but I, I sense I'm going to hear some pretty good things. It's, I think we're in a really good spot. Mike, we've heard from student athletes who, um, especially I think maybe in the non-revenue sports, who really weren't even aware of Purdue until sometimes they yeah. came for a visit. I don't know if that's something you might have dealt with at Xavier, too, where there's not a geographic brand associated. Yeah. So is there a way to improve that beyond just winning in the market in sports? Is there some way to kind of expand that? Or well, I, I think uh, 
Tom Schott will be the guy that solved that problem for us here. Uh, <laughs> by the end of the day, I think he'll probably have that figured out. <laughs> um, I, I think just making sure, and I, and I know we're doing it, we're already doing it, but, but being really effective with all the, the ways that young people communicate these days and making sure that we're visible, we're present, uh, we're relevant in all those different uh, arenas, and, I, and I'm going to get them wrong if I try to say what they are, uh, but folks smarter and younger than me will uh, know exactly what it is we ought to be we ought to be doing from that perspective. But I think I think that's part of it today. You know, you can, you know, again, generationally, you can agree or disagree with that that being important. But I think you can't ignore it. You've got you've got to be out in that world. You've got to find ways to, to, to attract attention and, and to build your brand and, and have your identity be more than dependent on just whether you win or lose. Uh, it, but I do say that you know, again, at the end of the day, one of the things I said to our folks uh, last week is, you know, for lots of great things in place here, but what, what hasn't happened in, in the recent past are those really program-defining sort of breakthrough competitive moments where you win at a national level when, when the lights are really bright and people say, wow, Purdue. That, and that, that, that is part of it. I mean, that, that sort of accelerates that process of awareness and identity building. Uh, and, and, and you can't discount the fact that you know, we need to continue to strive to have those moments happen. That will help all the efforts that we can we can the things that we can do on a day-to-day -day basis already. Mike, I'm sure you saw a lot of supportively uh, passionate fans and met a lot of those fans yeah. on Saturday. How do you deal with, like, actually deal in your interactions <coughs> with impatient, disgruntled, negative fans? I ignore them for the most part. It's uh, <laughs> no, and that's not that's not true. I, uh, but I, but I would say this. I, uh, you know, I've done this for a long time, and and I've certainly run across for every school has folks that are half empty folks where they just they, they view nothing but challenge and up and uh, and less than uh, opportunities as, as just the way they get up in the morning and I, and I can't change that I'm not going to change that but I will tell you this that for me it's about focusing on our, our positives on our strengths our, and the advantages and, and the opportunities that we have ahead of us uh, and and to that end you know those are the folks that are going to get us where we need to go I mean at the end of the day you, you build things with positive energy with with enthusiasm, you don't build things with folks that believe I can't, we can't, you never will. Because I, I, I have just very little time and patience for that because it's just, it's just not productive thinking. It doesn't, it doesn't help you build anything. And uh, and I, I'll never be disrespectful. I'll, I'll listen to everybody and I, and I'll do that. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna, I'm gonna attach myself to the folks that believe we can and are willing to, to, to join arms and, and get us moving in the right direction. As opposed to the others that go the other way, it's just it's just human nature. That's the way I'm wired. I'm, I'm not uh, misery loves company, but it's not going to have company with this guy. It's uh, it's going to have to choose, look elsewhere for company. Is it easy for you to turn out noise, especially in social media? Oh, yeah. the it, social media world. Today? Com completely easy. I, I like I learned that lesson long long ago. <laughs> I I have no problem turning out the noise. It's uh, to me again I'm, having done this for for a number of years. As long as, as, as I and our, our leadership group and others, our coaches, we can all look ourselves in the mirror at the end of the day and know that what we're doing is, is the best we can possibly do and we're pushing the envelope uh, in, in the, you know, every appropriate way and, and doing our, doing, leaving our best out there every single day, that's, that's, all you, that's all we can do. You can't do more than your best. And uh, at the end of the day, people are going to like or not like that. And, uh, I can't control that. I mean, I, I, I know that. And I also know that you know, there are times when uh, at other places I've been where we have had great success and then it gets into, well, it wasn't, you didn't win by enough or it wasn't pretty enough or something. And uh, so there's always, there, there's always that. And I, and I get that. It's just part of it. But to me, I'd rather have all of it than none of it. Because when you've got people that are passionate, people that care and that have opinions, that's that's way better than having people that just don't care. I mean, so I I, I take it all. I, I'll, I'll, everybody's welcome, but those that are that are wanting to have great things happen, they're more welcome. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> Mike. After all the four days at Purdue, do you have any thoughts as to what you want the physical structure of Ross State Stadium to look like in five, ten years? <laughs> I, honestly, Brian, I've not, I've not gotten there yet. To be honest, it's uh, to me. You, you obviously wanted to meet. The needs of your fans. You mm -hmm. want to provide a great environment uh, for, for your fans to, to enjoy being at being at a game. I think you want it to have life. I mean, you want you want the place to have a, a pop to it. You, you, it's, that's and it's a 
general term, but I think when you walk in there, you want to say, ooh, this is, this is, this is cool. Uh, obviously, every stadium in a, or arena looks better when it's full uh, than it does when it's just sitting there, but, but on a day-to-day -day basis, when, you, when people are thinking about Purdue, when, when recruits visit, you want the place to look in, in a way that's going to be attractive. And that's, uh, so however, what we need to do to make sure that that happens in, in a better way as time goes by, in an improved way, Will be will be important, but I think that'll be part of the plan that, uh, that I know Morgan's going to be working on over the next several months. You know, that, that's all part of it is how how we envision Ross A looking in the years ahead. It's like a more yeah. general question, but as a longtime AD, what do you think is the biggest challenge facing college athletics today? Uh, boy, I, I think our structure is one that you know we, we never quite seem to get comfortable with how we're structured now we've got the autonomy conference you know the five conferences the power five group or whatever term you want to use i think making sure that we lo don't lose sight of the fact that there's there's health in or strength in, in even greater numbers beyond just the five conferences i you know we, we we sort of start to circle the wagons in a lot of ways and and i, I don't know that that's a hundred percent healthy uh, i think Division one, on a broader scale, still has real value. I think from a competitive standpoint, from a scheduling standpoint, from a health of collegiate sports standpoint, you know, it, it can't just be 65 schools or whatever the number is, or the 80 schools. Um, I think it, I think it's really important that we look a little bit broader than that. I also really believe that the focus that's, that Mike alluded to on, on student athlete experience and, and how we how we treat that going forward is going to continue to be really important. I mean, we can't we can't ever let this become about just how much money, how big is this contract. I mean, that's that, that I think that got us to where we are today with all the legal challenges, and I think we need to change the conversation more uh, in the direction of are we doing the right thing from a student athlete perspective. I think we, I think the focus is clearly there. I think you know we here at Purdue are doing lots of right things by our by our young folks. We want to make sure we never lose sight of that. That's got to be. That's got to be what we think about every day because that's that's the only reason we're here. That's without without them, without uh, without without the young people in our program, uh, we, we don't have jobs, and that's uh, and, and that needs to be something that never, we never lose sight of.